we've been fortunate enough to receive competitive funding from the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, NHLBI, in a number of networks. The first has been the Severe Asthma Research Program, which has now been renewed and it's in its 11th year and will go on for another six years. This program is a little bit of a misnomer because when anyone says, again, the Severe Asthma Research Program, or SARP as I will call it, they think of, that we're only evaluating and characterizing and investigating severe asthma. But the comparison group for severe asthma are individuals, not normal individuals, but individuals with mild disease. So within this program, in the first 10 years, across initially eight sites, and now in the last four years, four sites, uh, we've characterized uh, about 1,400 individuals in a population that has a, a large number of severe asthmatic individuals, probably the largest uh, group of severe asthmatics that have been seen anywhere in the world. And within that, we've been developing insights into the characteristics of more severe asthma, why individuals develop more severe asthma and have progressive disease, understanding specific phenotypes, and using this data, I think, to better under, uh, develop personalized or individualized therapeutic approaches by understanding the characteristics of the disease. The second network is uh, the principal investigator, Steve Peters. This is the NHLBI Asthma Clinical Research Network. Again, we've been part of the prior grant, and this was recently renewed and is now called AsthmaNet. Each of the sites in AsthmaNet have both a adult uh, uh, um, site and a pediatric pulmonary site. Our pediatric pulmonary site is primarily at Emory with Ann's, Ann Fitzpatrick. And the purpose of this network in many ways is to do studies on understanding therapeutic indications or uh, new therapies that mostly pharmaceutical companies will not do. Uh, we led a very important study uh, from the site with Steve Peters and I in which we looked at a medication, teotropium, an anticholinergic that's primarily used in pa treating patients with COPD and showed that this medication was very effective in asthma as an add-on therapy to inhaled corticosteroids, as effective as long-acting beta agonists, and both of these medications were more effective than just increasing the dose of inhaled corticosteroids. And this paper was published in the New England Journal last year. Uh, the third network is a new NH, NIH network. It's called Spiromics, and it's really involved in understanding the molecular and uh, longitudinal and genetic characteristics that lead to COPD and progression. And again, like SOAP, this is now a longitudinal study over three years. We are one of six sites across the country that was funded in this network, and we are well into now establishing the cohort, which, are, which will be followed over the next three years at Wake, and hopefully longer if there's additional funding. So these networks are very critical to understanding what we would now call translational medicine and characteristics of both asthma and COPD. Additional networks that we're involved in, we've been one of the three lung sites in the 13-site stampede network, which was to look at genome-wide association studies in heart, lung, and blood diseases. Uh, Ten of the sites were either heart or in one blood, and three sites were across the country lung disease, one at University of Southern California, a pediatric site, and one at Hopkins looking at ethnic diversity in asthma. And our site really was emphasizing characteristics that lead to progression and severity of asthma. The second uh, of the sub-networks that we're involved in is we're a sub-site uh, to the pharmacogenetic network grant that's at Harvard with Scott Weiss where we're looking at the pharmacogenetics of asthma, especially related to beta agonist therapy and inhaled corticosteroid therapy, the two mainstays of treatment in asthma and other obstructive lung diseases. What's my future vision for where all of this is going is a number of aspects, and some of this is going to be transferable to other respiratory diseases. 
In asthma, we've already defined better ways to understand the disease phenotype heterogeneity, what causes disease progression from mild to severe. Part of the spiromics network is to do the same in patients with COPD, where we're evaluating a group of individuals with mild disease, smokers without COPD, and individuals with very severe COPD. And looking at their disease progression, their biologic mechanisms, trying to look at biomarkers that predict disease progression, and trying to look at structural correlates by doing uh, imaging using CT scanning. So the future will be better approaches that I think can be brought down to real clinical uh, skills that can be used to both for better diagnosis, better treatment, and more individualized or personalized therapies.